Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Child Anxiety Fact Podcast. My name is Dawn Friedman, and I'm the owner of Child Anxiety Support, a membership for parents of anxious kids. I have my master's in clinical counseling and additional postgraduate training in child anxiety disorders, including exposure and response prevention and the Supportive Parenting for Anxious Childhood Emotions Program, or SPACE program, which was designed by Dr. Ellie Levowitz of the Yale Child Study Center. I'm also certified in infant-toddler mental health. FAC stands for Frequently Asked Questions, and each week I'll be answering your questions about childhood and teen anxiety. Let's get started. Today's question is, what can you do with a four-year-old who might have anxiety? I love this question because I picture the person who sent it to me kind of throwing their hands up in the air like, what on earth can you do with a four-year-old who might have anxiety? But I think that they're asking a couple of things here, which is how can you tell if they have anxiety? There's that might there in the question. And also, what can you do if they do have anxiety? Now, remember on the very first episode, we talked about how to tell if a child has anxiety, and we talked about looking for behavior that is not developmentally appropriate. That's a little tougher with a four-year-old because they're growing out of some toddler preschool anxieties, like being away from caregivers and being afraid of the dark, but they're also growing into some bigger kid anxieties like robbers and fires. As an aside, I get a lot of calls about five-year-olds because a four-year-old who struggles to leave a parent doesn't ring quite the same alarm bells as when that child is five. I mean, it's not uncommon to have a kindergartner who has trouble leaving mom in the morning, but we start seeing that as more of an issue when they hit that age. Even though five is a nervous age, generally speaking, as kids start to become more aware of the great big world beyond them, they do tend to get more anxious. Four and five-year-olds tend to be deep thought ages when kids start asking about where babies come from and what happens when we die and other big philosophical questions. Okay, but back to how do we know if a four-year-old is anxious? And I guess I'd say that we don't have to know if a child qualifies for a diagnosis to get better at supporting them because anxiety doesn't have to be at clinical levels to deserve our attention, right? Right. So let's talk about that. Now, this seems like a good time to talk about the slow to warm temperament. I have a whole course on temperament in the Child Anxiety Support Membership because I think it gives us so much insight, not just into our child, but into ourselves and the rest of the family. I have an activity in there around that, and it's always illuminating. Anyway, back to the slow to warm temperament. This is also called high withdrawal. Temperament exists on a continuum, and this particular continuum goes from high approach to high withdrawal, and of course, everything in between. Now, I'm a slow to warm person myself, and I have a kid who's slow to warm, and I can tell you that it can be frustrating for everyone, including the child themselves. The slow to warm child is not necessarily anxious. They just need to come to things on their own time. They like to stand back on the sidelines and observe what's going on for a while before they join in. The more we pressure them, the more resistant they become because they need to do things on their own terms. This can look like anxiety, but it isn't. Not that a slow to warm child can't also be anxious, but you can tell the difference because when it's anxiety, the child will never join in even if they want to, while the slow to warm child will join in eventually if left to themselves. Occasionally, I'll meet with a family who's reporting their child has anxiety, but when we sit down to really assess the child, what I see is a slow to warm child in a high approach family. The family needs to learn how to be more patient, which isn't easy, especially if there are other kids in the family who are raring to go and the slow to warm child is holding everyone up. This was me and my family, and only when I had my own slow to warm kids did I understand why this was frustrating for my parents. So the anxious four-year-old may be anxious, but they may also be slow to warm. What we need to do in either case is continue to offer opportunity to face those uncomfortable things and to stay neutral about how quickly or how deeply they are willing to engage with whatever they're facing. 
Remember, the key to anxiety is confronting the things that make us anxious. That's true for all ages, not just for four-year-olds. As parents, that means that we validate their feeling without validating their fears. What I mean is we say, I understand you're scared and, but I know you can do it. And then we sit with them while they sit with that. We're teaching kids to be brave and you can't be brave unless you're scared. There is no brave without fear. And because we are fans of brave, we need to also give fear respect, but not power. That is to say, all feelings are valid, but they don't necessarily get to drive the bus. If you're concerned that your four-year-old is anxious, I mean beyond what is developmentally appropriate, first I encourage you to check and see if the slow to warm temperament is at play, and if so, try to slow things down. Their anxiety might have to do more with feeling pressured or worried that they'll be left behind. I remember feeling panicked that I would miss out because I wasn't quite ready. You know, like I want to do the thing, but just not quite yet. And could you leave me alone for a minute while I keep watching? And so I'd melt down about it if my brother and sister were ready to move on and I still wasn't ready to start. Like I said, this wasn't easy for my parents. I get that. But if the slow to warm temperament is at play, the more space we can give a child to come to things on their own terms without our pressure, which they will experience as anxiety inducing, the more likely they'll discover their capability. If it isn't slow to warm, if it's a child who is genuinely afraid, that gets a lot more complicated. And I'm going to say, maybe check out my membership for the whole spiel and personalized help. But generally, I'd say, Find ways to continue to give them opportunity to face those fears with your loving support. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you have a question you would like me to answer on the show, please go to childanxietysupport.com forward slash FAQ. And if you'd like to learn more about the Child Anxiety Support membership, please go to childanxietysupport.com. The membership offers courses, live events, and community to help you design a personalized program to free your family from the trap of child anxiety. I hope you'll consider subscribing to the podcast and sharing it with any friends or family who you think might find it helpful. You can get more of my child anxiety content over at Instagram, where I'm Dawn Friedman, MSED, or on Facebook at the Child Anxiety Support page. Thanks again, and have a great week.